Hello everybody. Today we will be chemically refining pyrolysis oil with this distiller. Though it may not technically be chemical, it actually is technically chemical because thermal degradation is a chemical change. So as you see, we're pouring this in. I don't mean to spill it everywhere, but you know, things happen. So, you know, it's not a big deal at the end of the day. I just clean it up with the, with the little paper towel, put it in the reactor. So we pour this oil in and keep in mind, this is the raw pyrolysis oil. Nothing done to it. No water removed, no chemicals added, just pure pyrolysis oil right from the reactor. So after that, got to fill up this water for the condenser. And we pour this water in, and for anybody who does not know how this works, basically I have a copper coil or spiral in that bucket, and copper is the second best conductor on earth, so any heat that comes in contact with the, pipe, the copper pipe will then be thermally exchanged into the water. So I turn this reactor on, and you can actually see here, I do have quite a bit of leaks of oil, which is actually a big problem that I'll deal with later. Now this thermometer here is here to tell us this temperature, and right now at around 95C or 203 Fahrenheit, we start to get oil forming. Now this oil, or the, rather the whole point of me wanting to distill is to get this oil cleaner, to get it like clear. And as you can see, it looks really murky and dirty here. And I reckon that's because there's a lot of water in the oil. As you can see right here, this is mostly water coming out at this point near the end. Um, but we know that water is usually one of the things that make things look cloudy and murky when it comes to this stuff. So I wanted to change things up. So as you see, I added a lot of insulation because I am very aware into how important insulation is when it comes to doing anything with an open flame. We need to keep heat in, so I added this insulation to this distillation column. And I've also added insulation all around the distillation chamber itself. These are former alumina bricks from my other reactors, so they do have some things on them. They will end up probably smoking or catching on fire, but they'll serve their purpose. Uh, I did adjust the copper coil a little bit. Um, because I had some issues getting it sealed down here. You know, I'd always have it leaking water, and the back over here is still leaking water. Um, so I gotta fix that. But the good thing is, that's just water leaking, no big deal. So we'll just run this thing and see how it works now with the insulation. So I'm gonna run this out with propane this time around, just because I've ran out of microwave pyrolysis gas at this point, or the gas from the reactor. Of course, ideally, I like to keep it closed loop, but just this one time around, I'm going to go ahead and run this out of propane um, just for testing. You know, we really want to see these results. So don't do what I did there. Don't blast in propane. It's better to light it outside than to light it inside because it's going to cause a little explosion. It kind of scared me a little bit there, but you get the point. Um, just don't do that, you know. I, I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> you will see. And, you know, just don't do what I have done if you go to do this so you see it starts off around 33c around 95 fahrenheit and eventually we start to get some oil coming out here but this is a huge moment where you don't want to do what i did so i was interested in saying okay do we have some flammable fumes coming out so i lit this on fire and of course there were flammable fumes you know i was trying to test on how good the condenser was working um and that was a big issue because you see the whole thing caught on fire and I couldn't put it out. Like, I could not put this fire out. So I tried to put this cup over here. That was the big mistake. For some reason, that started to cause the oil to shoot out when I put the cup over. There's type of suction or something happened. And now there was flaming oil shooting out of this distillery at a very, very rapid rate. And I started freaking out because it's like this oil was really shooting out. And I knew it wasn't going to just magically put itself out. So I, the first thing I thought of is let's get it out of this cup. Because this cup was made of plastic actually. So let me get this out of the cup. So I ran to go get another glass to transfer this liquid into. And by the time I came back, it was absolutely ablaze. I put my gloves on because I'm not trying to burn myself up here. And you could just see everything is on fire. Like an absolute disaster. And when it came down to it, it just kept making this oil. I had to use a fire extinguisher because it wasn't going to go out. It literally was just going to keep burning. So you can see this is the oil I retrieved in the end. There is a layer of water at the bottom, but it's separated. 
unlike before. So this time around, this was a distillation run I did in the morning time, so it was quite dark outside, but I wanted to try another thing different. I wanted to see what would happen if I, uh, I ramped the heat up as hot as I could get it from the very beginning, right? Um, see if that would give me any type of clear oil yields or anything like that. So I'll pour this oil in right from the reactor, like I say, pure pyrolysis oil, nothing done to it beforehand. Pour this water into the condenser. And as you see, we're running this thing off of the, the pyrolysis gas this time around. And this is a really beautiful flame, as you can see. And you can tell I have this flame pretty hot up because I want to see if heating it up really quickly would do anything. So we have it at 222 Fahrenheit, around 100 centigrade. And the gas pressure has got from 120 to 40, so this thing has been running for a little bit. So we should start to get some oil coming over pretty soon. And as you can see, we do. But the hot temperatures or the rapid heating seems to have be uh, doing a similar effect. As you can see, this oil is murky and dirty and, and just clumpy and stuff. And that's because it really is like it's distilling over the same time water is. Now, I made another mistake here, and that is I underestimated how quickly the stuff would come out. It's because I rapidly heated it so much that, like, you could see it's just an absolute stream. And when you distill things properly, you actually never want it to just be a stream like this because at that point, it's not really distillation you're doing. You're just more of just uh, boiling everything over. So you can see this stuff is absolutely pouring out. Another disaster situation. At least it's not on fire this time around. But I'm just running over here trying to get uh bigger containers to put this in and smaller containers to put it this bigger container like it was just a mess honestly an absolute mess and i had to clean up all this damn oil everywhere i would say the best thing about what i do with the pyrolysis is there's zero waste you know all this oil that's spilled everywhere um i got it up with the rag and then i, I ended up putting those rags in the reactor and i recover the oil and can use it for other things to do other tests with in the future i didn't even have time to get gloves for, on for this by the way i, I know i know i should have got some gloves before i started cleaning this up off the ground but it was like it's already all over my hands anyway i might as well do it like whatever i don't care so i got this all this oil up like i said these uh these paper towels end up just going in the reactor closed system right closed loop zero waste so not really all that big of a deal, but still, obviously, we prefer not to spill oil everywhere. It's not really a good, <laughs> something I look forward to doing. But you could see, we got quite a bit of oil. Um, of course, it was mixed with some other stuff. Not really fractionated in any way. But we got it, you know. So, in the end, this is how it ended up kind of looking. Some of the best of the oil actually kind of had more of like a, a uniform look. So, this is the next distillation run here. And I changed up the column a little bit. So you can see I moved where the thermometer was. This was actually under a suggestion from, um, from some of you guys giving me some tips. I moved where the thermometer was. And that was really the primary change. I did ch alter some of the pipes a little bit. And I did also add the Liebig back to this. At some point before I removed the Liebig. And that did decrease the efficiency on the con condensation. Because, you know, you guys saw before I had flammable vapors, which is never what you want. Because it, when you have flammable vapors, that means that those are oils that are not condensing. So I have a jar full of pyrolysis oil here. But this time around, I removed a lot of the water in this oil. You know, because this is my little ghetto separatory funnel here. So I removed much of the water, as much as I thought I could, in this separatory funnel. Before I went ahead and I poured this in the reactor. So... At this point, that's pretty much mostly pyrolysis oil going in there and just pyrolysis oil. Pour this water into the condenser bucket as usual, you know, the same two things here, cha-cha slide. Um, and we turn this on. And as you can see, I actually do have a little bit of leaking from the bucket. I could never get that damn the pipe coming out of the bucket still. You know, I put flex tape flex glue all types of crap on there it never would seal but whatever so you can see i started to get some oil coming over here and since i removed the water you can see even though i'm heating this pretty quickly 
look at the oil it looks a lot better it's not murky not muddy so removing water is a huge step in this process it seems like pre removing the water which doesn't hurt anything so why not in the end right So I then wanted to do some experiments with this distilled pyrolysis oil. So I poured about 500 milliliters into this measuring cup. Once again, spilling some of it like I always do. I poured about 500 mils, and I wanted to see what happens if we re-distill re this pyrolysis oil, right? So I then poured that 500 mil of pure distilled pyrolysis oil, which you can see looks pretty good, you know, pretty good viscosity, pretty good color, all that stuff. So I poured this into the actual distiller. And I also added this port here to push out any oxygen because just like the actual reactor we really don't want oxygen reacting with things um, with the vapors and gases that form in here. So I go ahead and just turn this on, open this ports and what happens is that pyrolysis gas I'm pushing it will go up all the systems, all these pipes and then it will come out this end and I will be able to light it. Right, so let me go ahead and open this valve. And you know what? I forgot that there's residual oils and stuff in the chamber, and all them oils came out, so that's kind of annoying. But you see, it lights down there, so that means that we got all the oxygen out. Just the exact same test I do in my actual reactor to test all the oxygen. So then we're gonna get this thing started, show you guys the temperature. I changed the location again because I heard if you have it near the end of the condensation or near the end of the pipes, it'll show you the actual temperature of the vapors condensing. That's what you want. You don't want the temperature of the actual chamber. You want the temperature of the vapors themselves and what, what temperature they're condensing at. So as you see here, have this thing lit. I light it on the outside now and I push it in after I almost blew my hand off three times already. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Once again, beautiful flame, pure pyrolysis gas. And we start to get some oil through this too. But as you can see, this oil once again is not any clearer. It's still just as dark. Uh, the temperature is 99C and around 211, 210 Fahrenheit. But once again, the oil is just as dark. So I wanted to do another run. But this time around, I wanted to do something even different. I want to heat this thing as slow as possible. Go really, really slow with it because that probably is the best way to do things. I mean, it's like wine. So I actually bought me a real separatory funnel and I'm putting pure pyrolysis oil in this funnel and we're gonna separate all the water out. Just get the pyrolysis oil and we're gonna put this into in the distiller and do a real nice and slow, fine wine dandy run and see if doing that we can get actual fractions and decoloring of the oil, you know. Hopefully. So I gotta say, this separatory funnel, this actual one, I'm never going back to the old school cashew jars and nut jars and crap. Like, honestly, man, what an absolute disaster those things are. Like, I mean, like, it worked, right? It did its job to some degree, but it was so, it was so, like, just so much more difficult. So I then put even more pyrolysis oil in here because I had a lot of pyrolysis oil just sitting around. And I went ahead and... And this actually didn't have any water in it because I had already separated some of the water. But I wanted to make sure I already did that and got all the water out. So I just put that in there anyway. And you see it made for a beautiful little stream there. So I poured in 500 mil initially. And then I also went ahead and I put in... Um, 500 mil wasn't enough for the whole container, right? So it ended up being around 950 mil total. Um, so 500 mil at the first flask and 450 the next measuring cup full. But anyways, got the flame. And you see I have the flame really low because we're heating it really, really good. But I'm going to stop it here because actually, remember these leaks I had in the beginning, right? From the very beginning of this thing. Well, I went to go weld these leaks together, right? And I lost the footage of this happening, but anyways, this flange is made of cast iron. And if you try to weld cast iron, it doesn't cool down properly, it causes a whole bunch of cracks. So when I went to weld those leaks, 
it made it even worse, so much worse that I can't run this distiller anymore. There's so many cracks in there, so many places gases are leaking that it's an absolute disaster. And like I said, I lost the footage, so I really can't do anything about that. But we're going to build another one of these. I'll, it's going to be pretty simple, just a flange, a pipe, and some holes. And yeah, other than that, catch you guys later.